good Tuesday afternoon and happy early Thanksgiving. Tonight we're going to pick back up in the book of Acts chapter 9. We'll start back at verse 19. Well, excuse me, it's 20. We'll start at 20. The first part, to do a little bit of review, we're talking about Saul. The first part of this chapter was about the conversion of Saul, how Saul was, today would be a modern day ISIS member. He, uh, he was a terrorist, he killed Christians, he hunted Christians down, and Paul thought that's what he was supposed to do, to serve God. And of course, Jesus comes to him, uh, Paul gets converted, he becomes a Christian. Um, there was three days that he was without sight. Um, everybody remember last uh, Tuesday we talked about it. Uh, how he went to Ananias' house and how Ananias laid his hands on him and Paul received his sight. Well, during this three-day encounter, God really worked on Saul. After his conversion, we're going to see tonight that he's going to begin to preach about Jesus. So he's, he's went from one extreme to the other. And folks, that's what happens to a person that turns their life around, they get saved, and they serve God. And if Paul can be saved by Almighty God, with the type of man he was, any one of us can be saved, folks. There's no sin too great that we can't be saved. Remember that as we open up tonight and get in tonight's lesson. We're going to talk about Paul, and we're going to see Paul's going to, or excuse me, Saul. Saul is going to begin to preach Christ. So let's go ahead, let's get started, and the first few ch uh, verses are going to be about uh, Saul, and then we're going, it's, the Bible's going to jump back over to Peter, and we're going to, we're going to, Peter's ministry is going to, uh, Peter's going to get into uh, uh, part of this chapter, but again, we're going to see the church, the church is growing, remember the church of the people, the buildings are established for the people to go and serve and worship God. Remember, when I say the church, I mean the people. All right, let's get started. Verse 19, I'll go ahead and do it because it sort of ties in. And he took food and was strengthened. In other words, Paul, or excuse me, Saul. Saul, uh, is, his name is still Saul. God has not changed his name to Paul yet. So uh, if I say Paul, sometimes I mean Saul. But anyway, it's, we're talking about Saul, the same individual. Now for several days, he was with the disciples who were at Damascus. We don't know how many several days was. Uh, we just know the Bible says several days. What was he doing with the disciples at Damascus. Well, he was being instructed on his calling to preach. As I'm, God has called him to preach. And I'm sure during that three days that he was 100% dependent upon God due to him not having any sight, there was a conversation between him and God. And God's called him to be a pastor, a preacher, okay? So, what's happening during this, this verse here is he's preparing to teach the way. And remember, we talked about this. This is what it's called. It's Christianity right now. It's called the way. So, Paul is, is with the disciples. He's preparing for his servitude. All right, verse 20. 
And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. What do you think people, when they saw this man, thought, what in the world has happened to this individual? This man was hunting down these so-called Christians and arresting them, put them in jail, and killing them. I mean, what's happened to this man? What has changed him? Well, we know what's changed him. God's changed his heart. So, we see here, and we see here how he's he's already teaching and preaching about God. Let's go ahead. Let's read verse 21, and then we'll talk about it. And all, excuse me, all these hearing him continued to be amazed and were saying, Is this not he whom in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on this name and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? People's asking this question. They're sitting here asking the question, okay? They're saying, is this not the man that come here to Damascus to destroy these Christians, to hunt them down, put cuffs on them, take them to jail? I mean, but on top of that, as they're asking questions, they're amazed at his teaching and preaching. We can see here Paul, the Holy Spirit's anointed him and he's enabled Paul to preach. We see here, excuse me, Saul. While Saul was in prayer, he received an abundance of revelations. Now, some of these revelations that I guess we could take time and look at. Uh, let's go to... Let me get my Bible pulled up here on the other, on my phone. I've got one open in front of me. Let me... Let me get my other Bible pulled up here. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 and look at it. Let's see what's going on with this man here named Saul. 1 Corinthians, it's in the New Testament, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And of course, this is Paul after, his, after God changes his name, same man. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my message and my preaching were not persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of of the spirit and the power. So we see here, God's got a hold on him and, and God is utilizing him. Remember I told you, he wrote uh, 14 books of the New Testament, okay? Paul did, same man. I know I'm not trying to confuse you. At this point, his name's Saul, but he will be converted. His name will be changed. He's been converted. His name will be changed to Paul. Remember what God told uh, Ananias. Remember, God told Ananias, he said, this man is going to be a vessel to me. I'm going to utilize this man. I'm going to use him. So let's look at a couple more. 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, and let's look at a couple verses in it. 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, all right, boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable, this is Paul again, but I will go to the visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. 
And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard impressive words which a man is not permitted to speak. So can we say during this three days, possible, it's not scripturally, but possible sometime, I, I, I believe it was during this transitional period while he was 100% uh, uh, dependent on God due to having no sight or no vision. I believe this is what when God called him up. Paul was one of the men that I taught on. There were six raptures that's happened or taken place in the Bible already. The church will be the seventh, God's perfect number. Uh, Paul tells us here in this scripture that he, and what does rapture mean? The word rapture is not in the Bible, but caught up, it's the same thing. There's, there's words used to mean rapture. So we see here, Paul's telling the Corinthians, the church in Corinthians, that he knows this man in Christ. For 14 years ago, he says, whether in the body or out of the body, I really don't know, but I was caught up to the third heaven. Okay? Now, what's the third heaven mean? Well, there's three heavens, folks. The first heaven is what we can see with our naked eye. What you look out and you can see the moon, you can see the stars afar off, you can see the sun, you can see the trees, the sky. That's the first heaven. The Bible says the second heaven is where Satan has his throne. This would be what you would have to see with a telescope. This would be beyond what your naked eye can capture. The third heaven, folks, is the throne room of God. That is God's throne room. That's where God and Jesus occupy, okay? So, and, and that's a lesson that I actually taught on earlier. If you want to look back on YouTube, you can find my lessons. Just go to Junior Tate, and you can find these lessons that I've taught. But Paul's telling us here that he was caught up. He was, he's seen things that he couldn't speak on. I mean, God has showed this man things that he has no doubt in his mind who he's serving. Does that make sense? So we see that here. We see where God has not wasted any time utilizing Saul here. So let's go on. Verse 20, uh, 22. But Saul kept increasingly, increasing in strength and confounding the Jews who lived at Damascus by, by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. How did Paul do that? How did he prove this is the man he's talking about? Well, Paul's life and his lifestyle should, should speak volumes here. Like I said, he went from, from being Isis to a devout what we call Christians today, okay? He was a devout Christian. He was standing up, preaching and teaching what he was hunting down just a few days ago, what he was hunting down other Christian men for doing, okay? This man has done a complete 360 in his life. All right. Verse 22 here says, Paul's strength is increased spiritually and physically. Uh, Saul's confounded the Jews. He's overwhelmed the Jews with arguments for Jesus. Uh, Saul's arguments for Jesus were so good, he was proving that Jesus Christ was the way. Okay? Verse 23. When many days had elapsed, the Jews plotted together to do away with him. Of course, they did. Satan was trying his best to hinder this man. Satan had lost his grip on Saul. See, 
Saul was actually serving Satan instead of Jesus until he was converted. So we see here a first attempt to kill Saul. So he was he was making these men mad. The ones, the uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He was making all these men mad. They wanted to shut him down. They wanted to stop him. Okay, let's read verse twenty four and twenty five. But their plot became known to Saul. They were also watching the gates day and night so that they might put him to death. They want to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and led him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a large basket. We see here that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they wasted no time trying to kill Paul. They were watching the gates day and night for him. They knew this man. He, he served these same men that was trying to kill him. Okay? They knew him. They knew what he looked like. So the disciples outsmarted them. The disciples let Lord Saul down uh, over the wall, through a crack in the wall in at night in a basket. So Saul escapes to continue to do God's will. Verse 26. When he came to Jerusalem, he was trying to associate with the disciples but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. You can't blame them, folks. This man was hunting them down and killing them. But remember, he went back to the main church in Jerusalem. At this point in time, that was the, 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 the main church. And it said here, they didn't even want to associate with this man. They were scared of him. And... It took, I'm sure it took some convincing for them to see that he was now serving Jesus. Remember, here Saul sought fellowship with Christians, but they either did not believe or they did not trust him. Okay? So he sought that fellowship with his brothers and sisters in Christ. And as Christians, we should want to go to church we should be in church. We should want that fellowship with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. The Bible teaches us and tells us to bear one another's burdens. How do we do that if we're not in church? Verse 27, But Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to to him and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. So say, can, can Paul, Saul say here, can he get a witness? He did. He got a witness. Barnabas here, he witnessed this. He was one of the, uh, this, he was one of the followers of the church, the way. Barnabas was a Christian and Barnabas here said to him, he said, you know, I witnessed this man. I, let me tell you the story. Let me tell you what changed him. Let me tell you what converted this man. Could you imagine what a testimony Saul had any time he could stand up and teach and preach? All he had to do was give him testimony. At this point, everyone here knew the testimony. But later on down the road, could you imagine what a testimony this man had? I mean, he done a complete 360 in his life. Barnabas takes Saul in here. Uh, like I said, Barnabas sort of Barnabas sort of realized that somebody needed to speak up for him. Now, who is this Barnabas? Let's let's back up a minute. Who is this Barnabas? Well, we can say he's the the son of Consolation, all right? There were two nominations made to replace Judas Iscariot. If you guys remember, do you remember this? Uh, there was two names. Barnabas. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go back and look. 
Let's go back and look. Everybody, let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 23. I think that's where I need to be. Acts. Remember, this was when we first started out with the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 23. Let's see who this Barnabas is. Remember, I told you he's a Christian. He was a follower of he is a follower of the way. He was also he witnessed Christ, folks. He was there with Christ. He was there on the mount when Christ. He was among the five hundred brethren that witnessed Christ go into the heavens. Okay, so let's go to verse twenty three. So they put forward two men, Joseph called Barnabas who is also called Justice and Matthias. Remember, the, the lot fell on Matthias. Remember, this, this was the two men that was elected by the disciples to take uh, Judas Iscariot's place. So, two names was given. These, these were very, well, I mean, for Barnabas to be nominated, he had to be... Uh, above maybe or a little bit beyond some of the other men that was chosen. So there was only two men that was picked and uh, Barnabas and Matthias. Of course, the lot fell upon Matthias. So we can see here he was one of the nominees. That's where this name comes from. This man had a lot of authority. This man was very revered to be a follower of the way. This was a good choice. God laid it on this man's heart to take Saul in, to, to speak for Saul because God knew when Barnabas spoke, people would listen to him. All right, let's look at one more thing here. Let me, let me get it up here. One second. All right, Acts 4, verse 36. Remember I told you that he was called the son of consolation? In other words, there was two men and he was not, he was chosen, but the lot fell upon Matthias. Now Joseph a Levite of uh, Cyprian birth, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement or son of consolation, okay? So Barnabas takes Saul in, in Jerusalem. Barnabas comforts the disciples, letting them know, look, this man is who he says he is now. He's been converted. He's been changed. Barnabas lets his disciples know that God had approved of Saul. First, God had spoken to him and let him know how he was going to be used and how he boldly preached at Damascus and how there was a plot on his life to kill him. So we see here how God works. And sometimes we take for granted and we don't really look at our lives like we should on the spiritual aspect. But when we're in God's will, God, when God is using us, he's going to provide the means and the way for us to cont continue and to carry on with his gospel. Okay, Verse 28. And he was with them moving about freely in Jerusalem, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. And he is Saul. Verse 29. So remember, he's in Jerusalem now preaching. And he was talking and arguing with the Hellenistic Jews but they were attempting to put him to death. So we see here how, what does that mean? Paul spoke or speaks boldly, pre preaches boldly. What's that mean? That means he's preaching in a loving, fearless manner. He preaches, can you do that? Can you, can you preach or teach with a loving manner? fearless manner? Well, yes, you can. 
because if you're truly teaching God's word or preaching God's word, Bible says God's word sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the hearts of man, even to the marrow of the bone. So God's word is made to step on toes. Sometimes it makes us feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it puts us back in line. That's what it's meant to do. It's a guide for us to go by. But you do it lovingly, okay? So what are these Kenalistic Jews? They're Grecians, okay? But they're Greek speaking Jews. They're from Greece, but they are Jews, okay? Remember, I told you, we, we've we not seen uh, uh, anyone other than the Jews. Right now, it's only about the Jews. Uh, the Gentiles, we'll see that in chapter 10. Cornelius is the first Gentile. And folks, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile, Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what what background you are. If as long as you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. All right. So the Hellenistic Jews here, the Grecian Jews, uh, they were trying to kill him because he was arguing with them. He was telling them what was he arguing about? The law. It's what he's arguing about. What he was serving at the first of this chapter, he's totally and one hundred percent against now. That's what Jesus does for you, folks. He will change you if you allow him to. All right, let's finish this up. There's two more verses. All right. Verse 30. But when the brethren learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. Remember, Saul was from Tarsus, okay? That was where his hometown was. All right. So Saul again escapes. He gets away. All right. Verse 31, and we'll close tonight with verse 31, and we will pick back up next Tuesday, and we'll 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 be like I said, Peter, Peter's ministry. This will be the third part of this. We'll do uh there'll be three parts to this, but we'll start back here uh with verse 32. But let's go ahead and do verse 31. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace being built up why does the bible tell us this because right now they're 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 enjoying peace even though this was they couldn't preach about jesus anybody that pre preached about him was hunted down and killed so remember that god was providing a way because they were following his instructions okay so let's go on. And being built up. What's that mean? Well, that means his church, God's church, was continually going. Remember the church of the people. And going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Folks, why should we have fear of the Lord? Because our God is also a God of wrath. He's a God of love, but he's a God of wrath. If we do not follow his instructions as a Christian, then I'll put it to you this way. As a Christian, there's going to be two judgments. There's going to be a great white throne judgment for the lost, and there's going to be a uh, judgment for the Christians. What is a Christian judge for? We're judged for what we do for Christ, folks. And we'll be rewarded for what we do for Christ as Christians. Remember that. And I do not want to be part of the great white throne judgment because they have no hope, folks. So let's go on. All right. And in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. So we see here how, well, let's say there's five blessings of the church found in this one verse. Okay, let's look at them. It's the end of the third persecution of the church, so the church can now rest. Remember, there have been three persecutions up to this point. Edification or building up. In other words, it's going to continue right now to grow. Edify and continue to grow. Folks, it still grows today, okay? It's never stopped. It's been over 2,000 years, and God's word is as strong today as it was then. Walking in the fear of the Lord. 
walking in the comfort of his spirit, and remember, increasing in numbers. If we're walking in the fear of God, we're also going to walk in his comfort. Now let me explain that. If I know God, I'm his child. The Spirit, Holy Spirit dwells in me. God directs me on how I should live my life. All right. I know if I get out of line because the Spirit chastises me. The Spirit puts me back in line, okay? Walking in the comfort, I'm going to have that comfort and assurance of knowing if something happens to me where I'm going, folks. That's what that means. And the fifth blessing here would, of course, be increase in numbers. So we'll close here tonight. Uh, remember, folks, uh, the Lord loves you. If you're not in church, find a church, guys. Get in it. Get involved. Uh, if you're not a Christian, you know, I call on you tonight to change you to change your ways to serve the Lord. Um, there's three things you must do to become saved. Okay. First, you have to admit your sin, ask God for forgiveness, believe in Jesus Christ, believe he died on the cross, and he rose the third day victorious over the grave, death, hell, and the grave. And you got to, of course, believe that Jesus loves you and make a commitment to him. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, Paul, the same man we're talking about tonight, writes to God's beloved in Rome. In verses 9 and 10, he says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him to the dead, you will be saved. That is a promise, folks. And our God is a God of covenant. He's a God of promise. And he does fulfill his promises. For with the heart, a person believes. You believe here resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. In other words, when I receive the Lord in my heart, when I confess to others that Jesus is my Lord, folks, that results in salvation. So again, uh, if anybody needs prayer, uh, if anybody wants to private message me, then they're welcome to. Uh, Everyone have a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for uh, logging back on tonight and getting on with me. Uh, we'll pick back up again, Acts chapter 9, verse 32. It'll be, of course, uh, the conversion of Saul, part 3, next Tuesday night. Everyone have a blessed night. Please, if they would, like and share so God's word gets out. Thank you.